clearly a, a Consumer Product Safety Commission told them to put up there or something. George, I'm on a setup shot. Yeah, but once you, uh, once you, once you put the rim on the backboard, it covers up the warning. Uh huh. You can't see it. One, two, three, four. Um, you know, I did all of my measuring and all the rest of the stuff, and then finally put it up and drilled the holes in the side of the house. And then after it's all up, I, well, I wonder how close I did get. Only half an, half an inch off. Sure, just swing a little bit to your right. Just ever so slightly. Right? No, one, two, three, testing. One, two, yep. three, one, two, three. Yeah. How's that? Okay. If you took it, just sit there and chat for a couple of seconds. Yeah, you, you want me to talk, right? Yeah. Okay. The uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Uh, for the National Institutes of Health, is it, I guess that's enough, National Institutes yeah. of Health. I don't need, need to have much more of a, uh, right. of a title or, mm -hmm. or do we? Do you you think? could say National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, but that's it. Okay. What else do you know about besides uh, AIDS? Actually, most of my investigation is in autoimmune diseases and immune dysfunctions, things like uh, vasculitis and connective tissue diseases. Mm -hmm immune mediated because of our interest in research in basic immunology yeah. and immunologically mediated disease because this is such a profound defect in immune function. Okay, George. Dr. Fauci, given Dr. Oleski's work and indeed uh, just just uh, natural logic from taking a look at this uh, this new disease over the past couple of years, do you see any direction uh, that any turn that has been made in this disease, given especially Oleski's work? I, th I think there's no question about that. Uh, as you know, this syndrome has been evolving over the past uh, several months. It seems that as every month or even week goes by, we learn a little bit more about uh, how it can go out of its original epidemiological constraints. Uh, early on, as you know, the disease was felt to be uh, limited to the male homosexual community and then the IV drug users, and then we began to see that groups like Haitians, uh, uh, hemophiliacs, the implications of possible transmission via blood transfusions. When you have a situation that we're seeing here with this recent article by Oleski in which children, household contacts of either individuals with AIDS or individuals at high risk for AIDS have indeed, at least, uh, at least uh, a significant number of them, have what looks like a syndrome that's uh, identical to AIDS syndrome, that tells you that it's quite possible that just intimate contact outside of the sexual contact blood transmission route is a possible mechanism whereby this disease can be transmitted. If that's the case, then indeed the implications for the spread to even other groups besides infants and children become something that needs to be reckoned with. So I think it is going to have a major impact on our thinking about what the real confines of the syndrome will be. I mean, what are we talking about other intimate contact? Well, for example, um, there have been some uh, cases of AIDS in women heterosexual partners of individuals who either had AIDS or at high risk of AIDS, like IV drug sure. uses and Haitians sure. or what have you. Now, indeed, if one can have contact that is intimate not necessarily sexual, then one's talking about the possibility of spreading out of, out of groups that you would feel if you stay away from sharing a needle with or having intimate sexual contact that you're, you're safe from the disease. This brings in the implications that there are other ways just plain close contact. And given the, the long incubation period of this disease, we may be starting to see, as we're seeing virtually as the months go by, other groups that can be involved. And, and seeing it in children is really quite disturbing. When you say other close contact, give me some examples. Well, for example, if, if the close contact of a child is a household contact, perhaps there will be a certain number of cases of individual who are just living with and in close contact with someone with AIDS or at risk of AIDS who does not necessarily have to have uh, intimate sexual contact or share a needle, but just the ordinary close contact that one sees in normal interpersonal relationships. Now, that's, that may be far-fetched in the sense that that there have been no cases recognized as yet in which individuals have had merely casual contact, close old, uh, albeit with an individual with AIDS who, for example, have gotten AIDS. For example, there have been no uh, cases yet reported of hospital personnel who have fairly close contact with patients with AIDS. There have been no case reports of them uh, getting AIDS. But, 
but the, the, the jury is still out on that because the situation is, is constantly evolving and the incubation period is such so long. As you know, it's a mean of about 14 months, ranging from uh, 6 to 18 months. So what medical researchers and public health service officials will be con are concerned with is, the, is the, what we felt were the confines of transmissibility now going to be loosening up and broadening up so that something less than truly intimate contact can give uh, transmission of this disease. Uh, what, if we're talking about uh, the ever-present toilet seat or, mm -hmm. or, or, a, or a glass or a spoon or uh, prolonged contact with somebody mm -hmm. just, just talking, we're talking of, uh, we're raising the specter of a real public health problem. Right. Yeah. With regard to that type of normal yeah. interpersonal contacts of just speaking and food and things like that, there is absolutely no evidence at the present time that this type of a agent, if we're mm -hmm. presuming, we call it a putative agent because we haven't identified the agent yet, it doesn't seem to be following that type of an epidemiologic pattern, for example, a respiratory transmission mm. or, a, or a food transmission. There is no indication at all that that is going on. So I don't think really, though I cannot mm. say for sure, yeah. I don't know, but I don't think that we'll get to that state where transmissibility will mimic some of the common viruses mm -hmm. that you can easily spread around the population. But that doesn't mean that we have to be complacent about the uh, uh, the fact that this can spread, is spreading, uh, and we still now, in, in May of 1983, do not know what the full extent of the transmissibility is. And I think of all the things that we've learned from this recent report is not necessarily to feel that we now must be frightened that it will be transmitted by very common means, for example, respiratory or other types of means, but it does tell us that we still do not know what the full extent of the transmissibility is, and that's something that really has to be reckoned with, because if you had asked us, I'm sure, months ago, do we think it could have been transmitted, for example, through heterosexual contacts, a la the recent uh, uh, finding it uh, in heterosexual partners of patients, we would have said, oh no. And then when we would have said, how about children? Oh no. And so you don't really know what it's going to be uh, a few months from now. So rather than, than, than panic, I think it really needs to just be addressed and, and stayed alert to. Isn't there a problem of addressing this, uh, this situation because of a problem with money? Money. Well, uh, right at the present time, the, the public health service agencies are uh, appropriating and, and, and allotting uh, new monies to this. They're very alert uh, to the problem, and as a matter of fact, uh, even as we speak, there are uh, mechanisms going on right now for uh, diverting new money and providing new money uh, for the study of this syndrome. So uh, I don't think that that's a problem in the sense of we would be in a different situation right now if we had money. I think the money is coming. Uh, the question is, good ideas is the important thing. This is a very puzzling syndrome, and scientists like myself and others of my colleagues are taking different approaches, mm -hmm. both to uh, trying to determine the etiology and perhaps some feasible and suitable treatment. So I'd, I'd like to have some really good insight and ideas uh, <laughs> rather than the money now. What about the, uh, the, the new idea? That it seems like with age we get one a week now. Uh, this, uh, this new virus. What do we know about that? If the new virus you're referring yeah, to the, is the... The, t the TISO. The, the HTLV yeah. virus that has recently, we've heard about yeah. uh, uh, in the media, uh, about a paper that will be coming out soon, or a group of papers mm. in science. I think that's an important lead from what I can gather. I don't have the, the mm. data in front of me uh, that the uh, number of, of uh, positives per for a number of cases looked at was a rather small percentage. That means two things. It means it isn't clearly, clear-cut, unequivocally the cause of AIDS, but it also means that this is something that needs further intensive study because it is indeed an apparently good and solid lead in an area in which we have had precious few leads. So I'm, I'm somewhat optimistic that we can uh, use this lead to further study uh, the possible etiologic agent for this, but I think at this point in time we have not found the etiologic agent for AIDS. Let's uh, talk about that one more time in, in, instead of using etiological agent, 
uh, we'll say that with some kind of term that uh, the American course. public of course. Right. Uh, is, it's an important lead, but what? It does, does it say that we found the cause? No. It's an important lead, but given the, the state of the data and the observations now, we cannot say unequivocally that this HTLV is indeed the cause of AIDS. The data that will be presented that uh, is going to come out uh, soon in scientific journals tells us that we should at least be highly suspicious because this agent has been identified, or at least the mm -hmm. DNA segments of this uh, agent have been identified in a couple of several cases that were looked at. Uh, there are maybe other reasons why that's the case, because these patients indeed are immunosuppressed, uh, and it's possible that indeed this is a result of the immunosuppression, but given the fact that this particular virus has been implicated in other neoplasms, uh, such as the adult T-cell lymphomas, I think it would be foolish to say that this is not potentially a very important observation, and I think that's where we can leave it at this point, that this is a potentially very important observation that very well may be and turn out to be the cause of AIDS, but at this point in time, it has not been proven. Good. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, just south of Cathedral in New Mexico. Hmm? Just south of Cathedral oh, in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's 43rd just Street. Just gorgeous. Yeah, it's a nice area. Just mm -hmm. south of AU. It's very mm -hmm. nice. It's very convenient to get back to the NIH. Mm -hmm. And yet you could just go right over to the canal or down to Georgetown very easily. Mm -hmm.